praise him with trumpets, praise him with harps and lyrics, praise him with drums and dancing, praise him with harps and flutes, praise him with the cymbals, praise him with the loud cymbals, praise him the Lord, all living creatures, let everything that hath breath praise him the Lord. We are so thankful to be here this day, the beginning of a new month, hallelujah, glory to God, that he has allowed all of us to spite of whatever we may have encountered this week, this day, this day, we have gathered together and we welcome those out there who have joined us to this day that we can come and celebrate God, lift up his name, praise him, glorify him, let the word of God come forth in spirit and in might, and we thank you for being with us wherever you are, whatever time, we exalt the Lord and we give him all praise and honor and glory, so we welcome everyone. So let us go before the throne of God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for another day that we've never seen before. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us to the beginning of another week. The trials, tests, and tribulations. But we made it through, Lord. Because we know who we serve and we know who we come to worship in this house. This is your house, Father. Your house of praise. Have your way, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we release you in this place today to have your way. Lord, just let everything as we know move by the power of your hand. We bless you. We glorify you, Lord. We give you all the praise and honor and glory. Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anyone glad to be in the house of the Lord? It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So guess what? Everyone that's in here is qualified to praise him. You have breath in your body. You're qualified to praise him so we can lift him up and give him glory. Hallelujah. It says to give him thanks in all circumstances. When it feels good, give him thanks. When it doesn't feel so good, give him thanks because I promise you, when you praise him through whatever you're going through, watch God change things. Watch God turn it around for you. So I dare you right now to shut that atmosphere for praise now and just tell him thank you, God. Because if you don't do anything else, and I'm honest, you've done more than enough. You woke me up this morning, so I got to tell you thank you. I have activities of my limbs that are closed right now, God. I have my right mind. I have to give you praise and I have to say thank you because you didn't have to do it. But you didn't let those things be, God, and you kept me protected from danger seen and unseen. So I got to give you that, God, that praise. I got to give him my best praise. I don't want to sit down on him because he didn't sit down on me when I turned my back on him. He didn't sit down on me when I didn't do what I ought to do. So I'm going to give him praise and say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You made a way out of no way. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me out. Thank you, Jesus, for making a way. Thank you, Jesus. You've been so good. And if I can't find the words, I just say, oh, 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 oh. Oh, you've been so good, God. I got to thank you. I got to give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory. I'm going to sing a familiar song this morning, but we're going to change it up a little bit, all right? But you all can sing it with me. It just says, thank you, Lord. I just want to say, thank you, Lord. And if you know it, just sing along. It's real easy.
the declaration will also be scrolling across your screen. Now repeat after me. I walk in financial abundance. God supplies all of my needs, not half of them, but all of them. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Finances, I command you to be loosed from the world system. Because I give tithes and offerings, I am blessed and not cursed. Therefore, God will see to it that I always have more than enough for myself and to bless others. There are several ways to give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, there's a dollar sign, F to FWC, our website at f2fwc.org and click the donate link or you can text F to FWC GIVE to 1 364 4483 and give your offering there. All this information should be scrolling across the bottom of your screen. Father, we thank you for the generous giving of these, your people. We pray according to Luke 6 and 38. As your people give, give back unto them good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give back unto them. May this be their season for a financial windfall in Jesus' name. Show us the way, Father God, so that we'll give you glory. Thank you. 
sister today, thank you for being the minstrel that I needed in my spirit today. God used you today for me, and I appreciate you and to all of the musicians. Sometimes we overlook those who help to usher in the presence of the Lord, but I want to congratulate all of you today. Thank you. that you would stand for the reading of the word of God and I'm just going to obey God I'm going to give you what God gave me and I'm going to sit down Amen. but a couple of weeks ago the Lord woke me up out of my sleep And I heard the voice of God. How I many of you know when God speaks to you, it's a privilege. It's an honor for the Lord to speak to your heart. And I heard so clear in my spirit the title of this message. And I said, hmm, what is this? But I heard God say, the miracle of a look. The miracle of a look. Let's pray and then we're going to go into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We bless you, O oh God, for the opportunity to be a bearer of your word today. Pray that you would anoint us afresh. Use us like never before. Help us to say what you say. Help us to do what you do. Help us to deliver what you tell us to deliver. And after that, God, we promise we'll say no more. We'll do no more. Father, we pray that flesh would decrease and that you would increase even this day. Have your way, let your word have free course. 
bind the hand of the enemy, rebuke the devil on every hand. The blood of Jesus, cover and keep us now. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. Before you take your seat, look at your neighbor and say the miracle of a look. <laughs> How many of you know that one look from Jesus can turn your whole life upside down? If you would, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And we're going to come out of two particular passages of Scripture. Acts chapter 3. And the verse that we want is verse number two for the purpose of our lesson today. Acts chapter three, verse number two. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now there's some certain things that I want you to look at as we digest the scriptures. And I was thinking yesterday as a preacher, as a pastor, I said, you know, what kind, what kind of pastor am I? What kind of preacher am I? And I've come to the conclusion that I'm what they call a textual preacher. I like to look at a text and just dissect it and tear it apart and dig into it and see what God is saying to us. Verse number two says, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. All right, now let's look at some things here. Certain man, lame, carried uh, from or he was, he was born this way and from his mother's womb. He was, he was carried every day daily to the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. All right. And for the purpose of our lesson today, let's go over to St. John chapter number five. And for the purpose of our lesson today, we're going to look at verse number five. St. John chapter 5 and verse 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. So here we're in two different situations, but we're all here dealing with a certain man. Remember, I told you that God spoke to me and said the miracle of a look. And I looked at the fact of the word looking and all of our lives, we have been taught to look. Watch out. Be careful. Look where you're going. And I began to look up the word looking and the intra, the, there's an intricate verb that says when you're looking, you're exercising the power of vision. When you look, you're directing one's attention or you're directing the eye to look at something. Then there's what they call a transitive verb when you talk about looking. And that's to make sure that something that is done or taken care of. In other words, you're looking after something. Or you're looking to expect or to anticipate. And I don't know about you, but I believe that through this message that God is going to give us an expectation of what he's wanting to say to us today. As I stated, all of our lives, our mothers have taught us the importance of looking. When you and I went to school as a kid and we went to go to get on the bus stop or we went to cross the street, what did our parents teach us? Look both ways before you cross the street. When you're riding a bicycle, you're learning how to ride a bicycle, even when we had the training wheels. Hallelujah, as we were riding the bicycle, the one thing that I remember my parents teaching me is that when you're riding the bicycle, 
Don't look down while you're riding the bicycle, but look up. Hallelujah to God. And it's important that if we're going to do what we're called to do for God, you cannot look down and expect to have victory. Hallelujah to God. But you and I have to look up. We see here in the scriptures, in the book of St. John, in the book of Acts chapter 3, we see in the book of St. John, we got a certain man that was lame for 38 years. Then over in the book of Acts, we still see another certain man. But this particular certain man was lame from birth. And I want to look at St. John for just a second. And when we look at St. John, the lame man that was there at the pool of Bethesda, he was there for 38 years. Now that's a long time to be in that particular state or that particular place. And in 38 years of being at the pool of Bethesda, he said that all the time that he was at the pool of Bethesda. Now the thing that fascinated me, there was something about the pool of Bethesda that not only was the pool there, but it also had five porches. Yes. And I began to think, I said, Lord, now these five porches were these people that were at the five porches. In other words, all of these different kind of people filled the porches. Yes. Yes. I said, all right, Lord, what are you saying? And the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, let's look at each of the individuals huh, that were at the pool by the five porches. And we see in verse number three, the Bible says, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the troubling or the moving of the water. And for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever did first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Now let me just take my time here and I want to talk to you about these individuals that were at the pool of Bethesda. And I believe that if we be honest and truthful with ourselves, every one of those individuals that were at the pool of Bethesda, one or all of them represent every one of us in the room. Many of us are invalid. And I begin to look up the word invalid. And that word not only talks about being sick and disabled, but it's one without foundation or truth. My God, that's a person that's invalid in their spirit. They don't have foundation and they don't have truth. Then I begin to look at the word impotent. And that is an individual that's lacking in power and strength. They're weak. They're incapable of self-restraint. Ain't that some of us? Hallelujah. Right at the moment, a drop of a hat, we can pop like a cork. Hallelujah to God. Because we have no self-restraint. Glory to God. And then I begin to look at those that were around the pool. And the Bible talks about there were some that were blind. And these individuals had no regard to guidance or direction. There are people or individuals that are unable to discern. They have no knowledge of information. And they have no opening for light. These individuals are blind. And then I want to talk about those that are halted. Hmm. How many of you are halted in your spirit? At one point in time, you were on fire and running for God. Hallelujah. But something called life and sometimes situations that happen in life have caused you and I to stop marching and journeying in Jesus. Hallelujah, those individuals that were halted, they were brought to a stop. They stopped continuing in God. And then I noted 
that there were some by the pool that were withered. And many times you think about withered, they have a, an affliction or they've got a withered hand or whatever. But I'm talking now spiritually about those of us who are withered in your spirit. Glory be to God. You're at a point in your life <coughs> where you're at a state of dryness. You have lost your vitality and freshness for God. At one point in time, you used to run to the house of God. You used to run to the prayer meeting. You used to run, get excited about Bible study. But you, like those that sat at the porch, hallelujah to God, have become withered and dried up in your spirit. Glory be to God. And one of the things that my research showed me is that when you become withered, you become speechless and incapable of action. You, many of us, have become stunted in the things of God. Hallelujah to God. One of the things I notice here, and I know all of you Bible scholars probably saw this way before I did. But something hit me yesterday when I was studying this lesson. Amen. And when we talk about this certain man that had an infirmity for 30 and 8 years. And we talk about the pool of Bethesda. I don't know why, but for years, I thought that the man that was at the pool of Bethesda, that somehow or another he got to the pool. But it fascinated me and blew my mind. Watch this, y'all. The Bible said say, that the man came up with an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. And remember now, at a certain time of the season, yeah. didn't say what season, yeah. didn't say spring, summer, winter, fall. Yeah. The Bible does not specify what season this was. But an angel would come down at the pool at a certain season. Well, Glory to God. And he would trouble the water. Glory be to God. I don't know how the angel troubled the water. I don't know if he put his finger in the water, put his foot in the water, or put his whole body in the water. But the very fact is that certain season, the angel came and troubled the water. And it says in the word of God that whosoever first got in the water after the troubling, they were healed of whatever disease they had. And as I shared with y'all, I don't know why in my mind, but I thought <coughs> that this man had got to the water. But when I began to read a little further, the impotent man answered him, said, Sir, yeah. Master, yeah. Hallelujah, my Lord. See that word, Sir, there means my Lord. My Lord, hallelujah to God, that when the water is troubled, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, while I'm going, hallelujah, another step is down before me. But Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. But here's what blew me away. It said when Jesus saw him. In other words, Jesus looked at him in his condition. And I don't know about you, but many times you and I can be, the, be at the place of your blessing. You can be at the place of your miracle. But somehow or another, you're still hindered. You're still going through situations and problems. It look like everybody is stepping into the pool before you get there. But what blew me away, the man never made it to the pool. But the very fact that Jesus saw him, Jesus looked at him, and when Jesus looked at him, Jesus said, listen, rise, take up your bed and walk. In other words, the Lord was saying, you ain't got no more excuses. Because the very fact that you were looked over, stepped over, many of us in this room, you may feel as though you're stepped over, overlooked, forsaken, forgotten. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah to God and you're right at the place of your miracle, right at the place of your blessing, hallelujah, and you feel as though the Lord has overlooked you or many of us, we've got this spirit and this attitude. Lord, look like you're blessing everybody else, but look like you're overlooking me. But I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, that the Lord says to you, away with your excuses and he wants you to rise and take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah to God. Ha. Glory be to God. Let me slow down here ha. and take my time. Hallelujah to God. And after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And there at the Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda having five porches. Listen, it's time for you and I. Hallelujah, we're at the place of miracles. We're right there by the pool. But it's time for us to get off the porch. Hallelujah, it's time for you to get off the porch. Hallelujah, and do what God has called you to do. And I began to look up, you know how in the old days or in the country, you see people sitting on the porch. Hallelujah, and they're sitting in a rocking chair. And they're drinking lemonade. Glory be to God. But here, a porch is a passage where you go from the street into the first court of the house. Hallelujah. And the porch represents a feeling of you and I being stuck, being useless. We are, are we feel as though we are no use to God. We're on the porch. And one of the main spirits that hits a person when you sit on the porch is a spirit of laziness. Glory to God. And I believe with all of my heart that what has happened to the body of Christ and to the people of God, there's a spirit of laziness that has hit the house. Hallelujah. And God has sent me to give you a word. Hallelujah. Get off the porch. Hallelujah to God. Get out of your place of laziness. Get out of your place where you feel you have no dreams. Where you feel as though you have no purpose. Where you feel as though you have no goal. Get off the porch. Hallelujah. And go into the court of the house of God. Listen, child of God. It's a most shy. God is wanting his people. Get off the porch. There is more. Hallelujah to God. Listen, I tell most shot. Holy Ghost, I hear you. A lot of times when you're on the porch, your view of what God is trying to do in your life is limited. Hallelujah. You can't see far in the distance. Glory to God. And the enemy wants you and I to feel is that right where you are, you're stuck. You ain't going no further. You ain't going no higher. God ain't going to use you, but I'm here to declare unto you that the devil is a liar. Glory be to God. Ha. Glory. Get off the porch, child of God. Get out of the rocking chair and stop drinking that bitter lemonade. But God wants you and I, when we get off the porch, you have a greater view. You can see clearly. Hallelujah. You can look up and see the blue sky. You can look beyond the plains. Glory to God. You can see beyond the horizon. When you get off the porch, you can look up and see the sky. You can look up and see the stars. Hallelujah. And God wants you and I get off that porch. Ha. Glory to God. Why does God want you and I to get off that porch? Because there's, there's more for us to do in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The miracle of a look. Glory to God. Verse number six says, when Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. <coughs> Many of you think that the Lord don't see where you are. God sees your heart. God sees your heaviness. God sees you're broken. God sees you crying in the midnight hour. God sees that you're in pain. God sees 
that you're suffering. Oh, but all God is saying, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Jesus sees where you are. And he knows how long you've been there. And he asks us, he asks us in verse number six, Wilt thou be made whole? And child of God, God is asking all of us, Do you want to be made whole? Do you want deliverance in your life? If you do, hallelujah, there's some things that we have to do. One of the first things that we've got to do Hallelujah, we got to stop making excuses. Stop telling God. Hallelujah, that I'm right here at the pool of the place of my miracle. And look like every time I look up, somebody stepping in the pool before me. God saying unto us, he said, Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And listen. When you get to that point where you trust him and believe him and you take up your bed and walk, the first thing you got to do, you got to rise up. You got to come up from where you are. And many of us mentally, we've got to come up in our minds. We got to know that God is with us. He is fighting every battle for us. So the first place we got to rise is in our mind, glory to God. You got to rise up yeah. in your mind. Yeah. Then, that place where you've been laying, uh -huh. take up your bed or take up a mat take or, you know, you know, if you if you think about a mat, yeah. glory to God, y'all ever seen, hallelujah, a mat that you put in front of your door yeah. and people are supposed to wipe their feet yeah. before they walk into your house? Listen, child of God, many of you are lying in such a plane of despair, such a plane of disgust, that you're literally allowing the enemy to wipe his feet on you. Come on, but God now. says, take up your mat, glory to God, and walk where God has told you to walk. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You got to stop making excuses. Hallelujah. Stop telling God that there's no one to help me. But this is the thing that blew my mind about this message. The pool of Bethesda represents tradition. Oh, <laughs> with a God. The pool of Bethesda represents this is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> the pool represents this is how I've been taught all my life. <laughs> but God broke tradition. God did something that was unorthodox. Hallelujah. He told the man, hallelujah, that you don't have to stay here at this pool. And can you imagine the man getting ready? I don't know if he fell over in the water or jumped in or but remember now he was lame so he couldn't even jump hallelujah to God but here's the thing that blew me away those that were blind they probably could have felt their way to the pool those that were withered they probably hobbled their way to the pool hallelujah but those that were blind hallelujah felt their way to the pool I don't know about you but this man was lame and needed somebody to help him come on, come on. to get to the pool and all my life I don't know why but I thought that, that pool of Bethesda that that man had somehow never got to that water. And when I saw the, that he never made it to the water, but Jesus spoke to him and said, Rise to Mosha. Take up your bed and walk. Listen, away with your excuses, away with your hindrances. I don't care if you're blind, halted, dumb, blind, or whatever crazy. 
Get away from those excuses and know that God will take your very place of your infirmity and cause that to be the miracle that you need in your life. Come on, if you see God taking your broken life, taking your shattered life, have taken your life that has been dysfunctional and has caused you to be healed, clap your hands and give him praise. Glory to God. But here's the thing that blessed me. When God does the miracle, give him thanks. Many of us, after God has delivered us and set us free and has brought us out, the Bible said here that the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. But watch this. Verse number 14. Let's look one verse up. Afterwards, Jesus findeth this same lame man in the temple. Child of God, when God does the work in your life, Go to the temple. Go to the place of worship. Go to the place of giving God the glory and the honor. And what a blessing Jesus found that very same man that he healed in the temple. That's where we many times make the mistake. After God has touched our lives, if God has opened the door, after God has brought us out, we forget to go back to the temple and give God praise. And listen, I've learned something about God. The more you praise Him, the more He'll do. The more you exalt Him, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me go to my next scripture. And we're going to call it, bring it to a close. But before I move, remember this lame man had been at the pool for 38 years. And that's a long time to be in that same state. But God just spoke a word in my spirit. Told me to tell you, your wait is over. Your wait is over. Hallelujah to God. God will bless you. But you and I have to change our mindset. We have to believe and obey his word. We have to believe that we are healed and that we are delivered. And when God tells you to rise, you got to rise up in your mind mentally. But you also have some responsibility. Come on, come You've on. got to take up your bed. In other words, you've got to, that there is symbolic taking up your bed is a symbolic of dying to yourself. Uh-oh. Come on. Uh-oh. Talk about it. Talk about it. Watch it. You got to rise where you are mentally. Then you've got some responsibility. You've got to die to yourself. You've got to die to your selfish ways. And number two, you've got to get rid of your excuses. Number three, if you're going to take up your bed and walk in God, you've got to not get bogged down with tradition and religion. Number four, you've got to get rid of your habits and attitudes. That limit God in your life. Not only that, watch this. This is where many of us get in trouble. You've got to disconnect from your old tribe. You've got to disconnect from your culture. You've got to disconnect from your family. If you want God to do something in your life, you're going to have to disconnect. Glory to God. Then after you disconnect, you get rid of your habits. You stop being bogged down with tradition and religion. You get rid of your excuses. Then you got to get up and do something productive that allows your gifts and talents to be used in the kingdom of God. Many of us have too many excuses. I'm looking at many of you that are talented, gifted to do great and mighty things in the kingdom of God. But you're sitting down on God. Hallelujah. It's time for you to get off the porch. Get off the porch. Hallelujah. And go into the presence of the Lord. Now watch this. And this blew me away. 
Remember the scripture said the man was there 38 years. And 38 in numerology means relationship. Mm. That thing blew me away. 38 years he lay there. Couldn't get in the pool. But there was a divine purpose of why God allowed those number of years. And that's because God wants relationship with you and I. Stop making your excuses. Stop worrying about tradition and dogma. And, 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 and let, let me tell y'all something. If y'all talking about a traditional dogmatic brother at one point in time, huh? but the Lord has set me free to such a degree that I just want a relationship with God. Hallelujah. So 38 years, the man lays there at the pool. So listen, don't look at how long you've been in your situation, but look at the fact that he wants a relationship with you. But you got to allow him to do what he wants to do. Come on. Let me go to my next verse of scripture and I'm going to close. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now we're over in Acts chapter 3. Hallelujah and something bless my soul again. Now this particular man was a lame man that was lame from his mother's womb. And he was carried every day to the temple. And this temple or the gate was called beautiful. And the purpose of him going to the temple every day huh, was to ask alms. In other words, to beg. Glory be to God. And it blew me away as I looked at this. I said, wait a minute now. This man is born lame. But every day, somebody carried him huh, to the temple. Somebody carried him to the temple. Now, what, what, what got me is that why did they just carry him to the outer portion Come of on. the temple? Come on. Why did they carry him into the presence of God? And I'm here to tell you, be careful who you let carry you. Be careful who you let speak into your life. Because there's some people in your life who will only carry you but so far. How do you and after they carry you but so far? They'll drop you like a hot potato. Glory to God. But listen, it's this according to the word of God. This man was carried and laid every day at the gate of the temple. And all his purpose was, was to ask and to beg. But he saw Peter and John. Come on. Listen. Where are the spiritual nannies in the body of Christ? You know, I hear all my life that I've been saved. And I thank God I've been saved 50 years walking with the Lord. But in these 50 years, I've always heard about the spiritual midwives. Yeah. Those that would pray you through at the altar and, yeah. and you would come through yeah. with the Holy Ghost speaking yeah. in tongue. Yeah. But listen, but the very fact that somebody was carrying this boy every day to the same spot, to the same place. Hallelujah. And my questions, I said, Lord, we as the people of God, we got to be careful who we let carry us. We got to be careful who we let speak into our lives. And what I'm looking for nowadays, I'm looking for some spiritual nannies. Somebody that can help me to grow up in the things of God. Hallelujah. I'm tired of dealing with saints that all they're about is just trying to stunt your growth and my growth. But listen, child of God, God is looking for spiritual nannies that can help us. To grow up in God. Yes, yes. And this. Listen. 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 Peter and John. Told this young man. That was begging there. Yeah. At the gate. Hallelujah. He said. Look on us. Oh, <laughs> listen. I told y'all. God said. There's a miracle. 
in looking. There's a miracle in a look. Hallelujah. And if you and I would get our focus off of everybody else and off of everything else. Do y'all know that the, 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 the spirit that's in the air today, that the enemy has tried to, to, try to, 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 to push out against the body of Christ is a spirit of distraction. Child of God, you've got to look unto Jesus. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. But look unto Jesus. The child of God, the men of God said, look on us. And the man, the Bible said, and he gave heed. He gave heed to what they said. And he began to look at them, but he was expecting to receive something of them. Come on, come on, come on. Work. He was looking, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to receive something from the natural. Come on, come on. But they said that silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> Rise up and walk. And this is what blessed my soul. And he took him by the right hand. And lifted him up. And immediately. His feet. And his ankles. Got straight. And I looked at that and I wondered. And I began to go into my medical background. Glory to God. And I said now Lord. Why didn't you strengthen the thighs. Or. Why didn't you strengthen the man's hips? But the Bible said that his feet and ankles, hallelujah, received strength. Child of God, let me tell you something. When your feet are jacked up, the whole body is jacked up. You hear what I tell you? Glory to God. And listen, the, the feet on our bodies are important. The feet help with your gait. The feet help with your balance and stabilization. The feet contribute to your overall posture. Hallelujah to God. The feet even maintain your body temperature. How many of you have ever experienced cold feet? And when your feet are cold, the whole body is cold. Glory to God. The feet help with your coordination. The feet help keep us alive. The feet, watch this, ensure an active brain. And the feet can increase your quality of life. Come on, doctor. Come on, doctor. Teach us, man. Don't tell me the feet ain't important. Because the Bible says that our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. <laughs> now, those two little things that are by your feet, those ones, were, those ones that you forgot to put lotion on this morning, <laughs> them rusty ankles, glory to God. How did it live? The ankle is important for mobility. The ankle is important for your overall health. And if you are wanting to move in God, there's something called plantar flexion. That's the downward movement of your feet. But that comes from the ankle. And then the dorsiflexion. That's the upward movement of the feet. And it just blew my mind. I said, Lord, why in the world did you give strength to the ankle and the feet? Because listen, after God touches you and heals you, God wants you and I to walk circumspectly. God wants us to walk stable and upright before him. That's why God gave strength to the ankles and the feet. And if you have poor ankle mobility, Come on, Doc. You're going to have poor movement. <laughs> if you have poor ankle mobility, your balance is going to be off high up in your body. So you're wobbling. Equilibrium off. You, 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 can't, you can't walk. And how 
many of us, ha, hallelujah, our feet and ankle need to be strengthened in the Holy Ghost. God wants us to walk right. God wants us to do right. Hallelujah to God. So here, God touched the man's feet and ankles. But then, watch this. After he touched his feet and ankles, one of the other reasons is because God wants you and I to praise him. Because the man, after his feet and ankles, got strength. The Bible says he began leaping. He began jumping. How do you know after God has touched your life, he wants you and I to leap for joy. He wants you and I to praise him. He wants you and I to give him the glory and the honor. And after God does the miracle, working, the Bible says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Hallelujah. Listen, people of God, People are looking at our lives. People are looking how we go through our test and how we go through our problems. When we go through our tests and problems, are we just going to lie there in pity, murmur and complain, or are we going to stand up and say that you're the God of heaven? If you did it for me, you can do it for anybody else. Listen, the miracle of a look. People of God, you and I have to be careful because there's a spirit of distraction. And there's a spirit of laziness that has hit the body of Christ to such a degree that the people of God are lying dormant and not doing the work of God. I don't know if you fit in the category of any of those people that were at the pool of Bethesda around those five porches. I don't know if you lamed or halted in your spirit. I don't know if you've gotten to the place in God where you have just become withered. Come on. Your excitement for God is just not there. And I said what I said earlier because since you took me back, uh, as you begin to minister, and I was watching you, as you begin to minister, you were ministering from your spirit. Glory to God. And Lord, I said, Lord, these are the kind of psalmists that we need in the body of Christ. Somebody to inject us again with the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember when I was younger, coming up in the church. And the saints used to praise and, and praise the Lord and, and, and just be in such a jubilance in the praise that they said that you can hear them blocks away. Yeah. Hallelujah to God. But see, we done got too cute and sophisticated now in the church of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But listen, God is wanting us to get back to the place where we are on fire for God. Hallelujah to God. People of God, I don't know about you, but I am probably a couple of these people <laughs> that are at the porch. But all I kept seeing in the scriptures is that if I can just look to Jesus, <laughs> if I can just look up, <laughs> my redemption draws nigh. <laughs> Holy to God, look up, children of God. Stop looking down. Stop allowing the devil to, dis to make you feel despondent. As though God has no use for you. As though God cannot use you. Stop looking at your circumstances. Stop looking at your situations that you're in. And just trust him. I don't care what situation that you're in. Just look up. Say Lord. Help me. Help me. And I don't know where you are. And I don't know if you fit the category of one of those at the pool of Bethesda. But right where you are, lift those hands. Uh, woo, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. But all we have to
to do is just hear a word from God. We ain't got to jump in no pool. We ain't got to lay our bodies up against no porch. Uh, we don't even have to be at the gate. But Lord, more than anything, allow us to go into the temple. Allow us to go into the presence of God. And Lord, I am a firm believer that one time in your presence can make a difference in all of our lives. The miracle of a look. And you know what? I said I wasn't going to do this. I said I wasn't going to sing. But the song keeps ringing in my spirit. Only a look. <laughs> Only a look at Jesus will turn you away from sin. One look will bring you salvation. Eternal Eternal life to win. Y'all know that. Only a look. Only a look. Turn me away from sin. <laughs> we'll bring you salvation ha! eternal eternal life to win come on, come on, everybody on your feet come on, everybody on your feet come on, come on, come on clap your hands unto the Lord and let's say that again, come on You know that. <laughs> A look <laughs> will bring you an eye salvation. Eternal. Oh my God. you're going through in your life. I don't know your struggle. I don't know your battles. I don't know what you deal with on a daily basis. Every day you're being carried with the same problem. My, my, my. With the same burden. But only a look Jesus will turn your whole situation around. Stop looking to your family. Stop looking to your job. Stop looking to the president. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Oh, shit. In my own life, I look to the saints and I look to leaders and I look to bishops and I look to different ones. And every time I got hurt, I got disappointed, I got disillusioned. But the Lord 
has taught me. Look to Jesus. Look unto Jesus. And I understand now why the Lord gave me this message. There's a miracle if you just look to Jesus. Ah, bless your name. Only a look. Only a look. Turn you away from your sins, your habits, your hang ups. A look. One look. Jesus is a healer. The world don't believe it, but he heals all the time. Where are you at? I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking to you out there. But if you have looked every place else, try Jesus. <laughs> if you tried everything, you done looked everywhere, you done looked under every rock. Try Jesus. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus, I invite you to take one look. These are some of the things we have going on at Face to Face Worship Center. Every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Join us for our Zoom Bible study. You don't want to miss this interactive time of intuitive study of God's Word. Join us every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our virtual worship experience. You can watch on all our social media platforms. That's Facebook Live, our YouTube channel, and our website. You can also join us for in-person worship every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're located at 9121 Piscataway Road, Suite 4B, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. We would love to see your face in the place. Our corporate intercessory prayer is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us by dialing our conference line 319-527-4008. Come pray with us as we pray for the nation, the world, and you. There are several ways to give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Give LaFi, look for Face to Face Worship Center, Cash App, dollar sign F2FWC, our website at F2FWC.org, and click the donate link, or you can text F2F WC Give to 1 888 364 4483 and give your offering there. All this information should be at the bottom of your screen. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with us today, text SAVED to 202 519 9518. And we will contact you to provide more information about how to walk out your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. If you're looking for a church home, join us. We are the place of intimate worship, where you can grow both spiritually and socially. For more information, text PARTNER to 202-519-9518. And we will send you more information about Face-to-Face -face Worship Center. Continue blessings, and we look forward to worshiping with you again next Sunday.